Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to show how we can implement OPC UA client in Siemens i7-1500 controller. In this video, I will use i7-1500 controller as an OPC UA client and use i7-1200 controller as an OPC UA server. To implement OPC UA client in i7-1500 controller, there is one important example program. So firstly, we can go to support.industry.siemens.com and search the ID number shown here, 10976277. And you can find i7 user block for the OPC UA client of a Cymatic i7-1500. As we know, to implement OPC UA server function in i7-1500 or i7-1200, uh, we do not need to program too much. So basically, we will use OPC UA interface function to implement OPC UA server function into the controller. The i7-1200 and the 1500 controller, uh, in the controller, they already built in the server function. However, if one controller running as an OPC UA client, that means this controller need to proactively to build up or set up the OPC UA connection and send or receive the data to the OPC UA server. So that means this client need to program something to set up the connection, send the data or receive the data by the program. So that means we do need to program something inside the controller. Fortunately, Siemens released this example program so that we can use this example program to implement OPC UA client function. From this attachment file, Siemens supplied TI Portal version 50.1 and version 16 two versions project. Also, there is one important document. So I highly recommend you download this document and read this document at first. So in this video, I will use the example program and briefly implement and demonstrate how we can implement this function. And I will use the PLC sim at once to run as an i7-1500 controller. This is the OPC UA client side. So this PLC sim software is running in my laptop. And on the OPC UA server side, I'm using one physical controller that is a Siemens i7-1200 controller. So it's running as an OPC UA server. That is a physical device. Another important document that is a PLC SIM advanced, this manual. And this manual has a 399 pages. It explains the detailed function on the i7 PLC SIM advanced. So this is a PLC SIM on the one software can basically run it as a physical hardware controller, also including the OPC UA function. More importantly, this software can communicate with uh, some devices outside the laptop. And there are two important information uh, you need to read the detail. The first one that is a supported function. Uh, to implement OPC UA client function using this uh, PLC SIM on the ones, the OPC UA client function provided from this simulation software, it doesn't support security setting. So that means we will only use no security or non-security setting inside the controller properties. The second issue is that uh, what kind of a firmware of the hardware controller this PLC SIM can support. So if you found out this uh, 2.2 compatibility during upgrade, so you will find the PLC SIM advanced, this software currently I'm using version 3.0. So currently this is the list, this software support the hardware firmware version. So currently I'm using the version 3.0 update one. So it can support from 1.8 to version 2.8. There are two example program. For this uh, TI Portal version 15.1, it is using version 2.6 hardware firmware. And the TI Portal version 16, that is uh, using uh, version 2.8 hardware firmware. All right, let's download those uh, projects. And uh, in this video, I will use version 15.1 as an example.
And before we implement OPC UA client, let's quickly go through the OPC server area because from one video before, uh, I showed how we can implement the OPC UA server in S7 1200 controller. So you can search the link below. So in this video, I just quickly go through the OPC UA server side key settings in the i7-1200 project. Currently in this TI portal, it is a TI portal version 16 update 1. The controller what I'm using that is a i7-1200-1215 and it's firmware that is a version 4.4. Keep in mind, only version 4.4 or greater than this version, it will support OPC UA server function in this i7-1200 controller. And uh, to implement the OPC server, we need to go to OPC selection under the CPU properties. And we need to activate this uh, OPC UA server and check out this controller is IP address that is uh, 192.168.0.200. And the port number that is this. That is a 4840. And here for the test wheel, I will select a non-security. And keep in mind, in this small controller, uh, we will select the Symmetic OPC UA i7-1200 basic, this OPC UA license. This is the key settings under the CPU properties. And then let's shift to the project side and look at the program side. In the program side, I set up two dbs demonstrate in the server side we have a data from different dbs. Um, here I set up their real number, their float. So keep in mind those selection. Uh, when it's shrinked, you won't see the detail, uh, especially these two columns. They are the setting for the specific tags uh, give the permissions to the OPC client to read or write in this uh, dbs. And in this db, I prepare the sun x and sun y, these two rails. They are come from the different dbs. Other than the db, very important setting is here. So OPC UA communication. Here you will see this is uh, the server interfaces. Okay, double click this n1. This is the one interface. So to allow this OPC UA interface to publish our data, so there are two columns. So from this column right side, you can select the DB and the detailed data from the different DB and drag this data to the left side, like this way. So I drag all those data from the DB100, this DB. I drag data one to the test data two. I drag all of them. And uh, from this DB, this DB200, I drag the sun underscore S and the sun underscore Y here. All those data will assign to this uh, OPC UA server, this interface. Okay, we can shrink this and show the detail. This is the data name uh, in the interface. And this is the actual DB for this uh, interface. It's very clear. Also, it's easy for you to troubleshoot. If some data doesn't make sense, you can check out this uh, interface data. And from this interface, check out what the detail DB it actually is operate or reading from the PLC. All right, this is the OPC UA server side. Uh, after this, we can compile and download. After the CPU start, so we go to the watch table, look at the detail, the status of the variables. And now because the PLC has a program to run the sign and calculate the sign result. So that is running and also move the data to this test DA1, test DA2. So when we test the OPC UE client read, so we can test those four data, the OPC client can read the four data from this area. The OPC UA client also can write the data to this uh, DA1 to DA10. Okay, currently we have a data here. Once we build up the communication, 
and uh, write successfully, we will see the data will be override by OPC UA client. Okay, so we will leave here. Keep in mind, uh, currently this uh, OPC UA server side that is a uh, TA portal version 16. So after this, we will minimize this uh, project and start the OPC client side. And uh, let's turn to our main meal. And now in the OPC UA client side, I will use the TA portal version 50.1, hardware version 2.6. Use this example project as a start. Shift to the project wheel. In this simple TA portal project, it has a two i7-1500 controllers. So one is an OPC UA client, one is an OPC UA server. And in my video, I will delete the OPC UA server, only use uh, OPC UA client in this project. Uh, that's because I'm going to show one OPC UA client project is communicating with uh, one device from outside, from other devices. Maybe uh, you are using one OPC UA server from other brands, for example, back off Omron or other brands. It's totally outside the TI portal. And firstly, I will save as this project. Okay, I delete this uh, server. Leave this uh, OPC UA client project only. This OPC UA client project, what I'm using, that is a uh, TA portal version 15.1, update 4. And uh, if you recall that uh, i7-1200 controller side, that project, uh, what I'm using, that is TA portal version 16. They are totally two different TA portal software. This is going to show this OPC UA client is communicating with one OPC UA server from other devices. If we open, there are program here, especially this OPC UA client. This is the key function block to run the OPC UA connection setup and receive and send the data inside this controller. So inside this function block, it has a lot of sub function block inside. That's why I highly recommend if you try to implement or test this OPC UA function, you better use this sample program as a base and start from this program because there are a lot of potential settings inside this function block and some implicit connection between the hardware setting, uh, interface setting, and uh, this uh, function block. So it's highly recommend you start from this sample rather than start from the scratch project. You'd better read these documents as first, especially the section 2.2 and 2.3 as a start. Uh, it basically shows the sequence you need to set. For example, activate a UA client, uh, select this uh, purchase license, create this uh, interface. In the interface, we will build up the connection and uh, select this uh, security settings. And then very importantly, we will build up this uh, read list and write list and matter list. Especially here, I will demonstrate here. So you better read this uh, section 2.2 and uh, 2.3 at first. Okay, and in this TI portal version 15.1, this sample program, the controller it is using, this is a version 2.6. And uh, let's change this uh, IP address. So OPC UA server, that controller IP address is a 0 0.200. And I will set this a client that is a 100, which is very clear. Okay. And uh, the detail setting, we need to shift to the OPC UA side. i7-1500 controller is support client and the server function. And in this video, we will implement the client function. So we will leave the server and check without checking this uh, activate the OPC UA server. Okay, so we will focus on the client side. If you look at the detail on the client side, there's uh, no other settings. There's only one checkbox. See? So we need to check this uh, activate OPC UA client. That's because to implement the client function, actually the more important thing that is uh, this area. This is a sample program provided from Siemens. So you must use this program to implement. 
This is not the same as uh, implementing OPC UE server function inside the i7-15 or 1200 controller. We activate this and uh, keep in mind in the runtime license area uh, in this OPC UE side, this type of the purchase license, uh, we can select a small uh, for testing wheel. Okay, this is the CPU setting. So according to the OPC UE client function, only two parts. One is uh, this checkbox, one is uh, the runtime license. And then let's go through the program. So if we open the OB1, so we can see there is only one main function block coded from this OB1. It looks very simple and very brief. Mm. To understand how we can use this uh, function block, how we can set up the communication, how we can trigger the reading and uh, trigger the writing, we better use the watch table. If you open this watch table, look at this, controlling OPC UA client. Using this uh, watch table, it's uh, easier for you to understand how it works, how it can be operated. So, to set up the communication, we can turn on this uh, OPC UA connect, this tag. And to read the data, we can trigger the OPC UA read, this tag, uh, this variable. To write the data from the OPC UA client to the server, we can trigger this tag. So OPC UA write. Uh, also, we can read the detail from this uh, status uh, tags. And if you look at this controlling interface, so this all those data come from the DB from here, controlling interface. If you open this controlling interface, this DB is just a global DB. You can write something here. It just provides some default tags you can use. Uh, you can turn on the connection or you can trigger the read or trigger the write. Or look at the detail bz down or arrow or status or diagnosis. All right. So under this folder, OPC UA client, they are the core of the OPC UA client for this controller. So the function block at B1, that is uh, the key function block. The DB3, that is the instance DB of this uh, at B1. So basically, you do not need to change anything here at B1 and the DB3. Only thing you need to take care of, that is this DB1 and the DB2. So look at this name OPC UE client interface underscore configuration and the data. If we open this data, double click, you will see inside this DB, there has a three list. One is a read list, one is a write list, one is a method list. So if we open this variable reading list, we will see there are three data here. We can now rename or add the data here. That's because those data in the read list or the data in the write list here, actually they are controlled by a data type, OPC UA client interface dot read list dot write list here. So who is controlling this? They are here, OPC UA communication and this client interfaces. And if you look at this name, OPC UE client interface. So this actually control, this interface name actually is controlling all those data type. All right, keep in mind, currently they are looks like this. We will compare, we change something after. So if we open this OPC UE client interface, so this is a key function to set up one OPC client interface and set up the communication to the OPC UA server. And once you open this, keep in mind, there are three columns. Sometimes the right column could be like this. For the new starter, they will forgot this or they will skip that. So keep in mind, there are three columns here. So interface, data access, and the server interface this actually they are running very important role here. So currently, because this is a sample program, so the sample program, uh, the Siemens already set up the three data in the read list and in the write list, there are two data here. And in the method list, 
there are one data here. To build up the communication or implement the function, uh, I will not use this uh, preset data. I will delete them and uh, set up the communication by my own. So from this step, actually this is our actual step we need to do based on the example program. So firstly, I will delete those data in the read list. Delete those two data in the write list. After we delete this, currently this interface is empty. Okay, so from here, the following videos, that is the core to implement your customized project. Okay, so this interface will run the role to set up the OPC UA connection. How we can set up the OPC UA connection? Uh, how we can assign which OPC UA server this client need to read? So actually, they are here. If we open the button, this is the properties of this uh, OPC UA client interface. You need to shift to this uh, configuration. Keep in mind, it is here. You double click, and in this uh, three column button, you lift them up and shift to this uh, configuration. And from here, you will see this is the client side. And here, that assigned where is the server? And in our project, my server that is a 192.168.0.200. And the port is a 4840. And this, this is the full name of the server address. So this client will go to find out this server. And to double check out, currently this is the client side. If we compare, this is the i7-1200 OPC UA server, that side project. So if I go to the CPU properties, look at the OPC UA side. This is the OPC UA server address here. If we compare, so you will see this address must be the same as here. This allows, this allows this client to go to find out this uh, OPC UA server, where it is, okay? And the security, let's double check. Security, as I introduced, because uh, we are going to run in the PLC sim at once, from test view, I will select no security. And the user authorization, I will select the guest. Check out this uh, automatic uh, accept the certificate. And uh, language, that is the uh, English language, so that's the default. We won't touch anything here. So just need to check, we will select this uh, no security and we will select the guest. So because this configuration is under this interface, so this interface will use this configuration to find out this uh, OPC UA server. Uh, and once this interface found this uh, OPC UA server, so the next thing is uh, what the data we can exchange, right? So that data read and write, we will build up the tag list here, how we can build up. So. Personally, I think this is a valuable thing in this video because as I remember, the documents doesn't explain too much on how we can assign this uh, read list. To define the specific data in the read list and in the write list, we can connect the OPC UA server, browse the actual data the OPC server is sharing, or we can click the import and import the list uh, by offline. So if you hit this uh, import interface, it will allow you to select one data list. Another way, or maybe a common way, that is uh, we go direct browse the OPC UA server, browse the actual data we can read or we can write, and drag that uh, uh, browse the data into our uh, read list and write list. And uh, let me show how to do that. So from this job list, let's select the online. And after select the online, let's hit this small button, connect to the online server. 
he says connect, and then he says online access. Currently, this area is running as an OPC UA client, and this client is funding the data from the OPC UA server. So from this list, let's type in the address 192.168.0.200 4840 Enter Search Find the selected server Now this OPC client found this uh, OPC UA server And if you recall, uh, on the OPC UA server i7-1200 side We said a non-security, so it's showing the non-security Okay. So from here, we will leave this uh, certificate location now, and uh, our user setting here, we will select the guest. Okay. From here, let's click this connect. Uh, it shows, do you want to trust the, the certificate of the OPC UA server? Yes. Okay, so once you hit the connect, if it shows like this, that means the OPC UA client in this uh, TI Portal software found this uh, OPC UA server. So this uh, server shows the, the device status. And the device side, we can see uh, the detailed versions. And uh, Here it shows a couple of data and strings here. And more importantly, this is a server interface. And those are the data we dragged into that interface. And this is the actual node ID from this OPC UA server. And keep in mind, this is a server interface underscore i7-1200 N1 that, that we set from the i7-1200 controller side. If we recall, this is a TI portal version 16. And if you recall, we set this right and here. Okay. And from this step, so what I'm doing, so the reason why we are doing here just because we can drag the data to this read or write list. So keep in mind, currently we haven't downloaded the program yet. All the things currently we are configuring the data in offline and configure the data in the read list and the write list. Okay, so like we introduced, so the read list we will drag the test data one, two, and the sign, and the y here. We will drag those four data into this read list. Let's go to the write list and drag the data one to 10. Drag them to the write list. We will leave the method list here, okay? And after we finish this drag, and after we confirm this setting here, and we can do a compile. Let's do a compile. Here it shows OPC UA server activate. And currently lessons we are using the small. So if you look at this, if you check out here, you will see this compiling actually is taking for a while. I will explain why. The reason why the compiling take for a while is that's because the DB on this uh, configuration and on this uh, data, DB1 and DB2, they are synchronized based on our configuration. Because if we go to open this uh, DB2, From this read list and the write list, this time when we open this, we will see, so this read list and the write list, the DB already automatically updated according to our configuration. 
right? That's because this DB1 and the DB2, they are synchronized by this uh, setting inside this uh, interface here under this client interfaces. And in this uh, OB1, when it's running, so if you look at the detail, all those data interface for this IB1, so all the connection set up the data come from those two DBs. So OBC UA client interface underscore or something. Here you will see here, here, and uh, that's the actual read data. So and after we config inside this uh, interface and uh, do a compile, so the data like this, this read list dot variable, it is here. So that is a DB2 here. So this read list will automatic update it by this uh, interface configuration. To show those data, let's go to the watch table. Okay, controlling OPC UA client watch table. Uh, so the reason why it shows red that because we delete that uh, example data, which is fine. Uh, we can delete them. Add a row. And uh, here I will let this read. I will drag those four data to this list. Okay and uh, delete this, drag those data, this is a right list, drag those data into here, okay, delete this right. Okay, we will leave this uh, existing watch table and do a save. And uh, here we are ready to download the controller, okay, save and uh, compile again. Okay. So to download the controller, as I introduced, I will use the PLC sim at once. Okay, let's open the PLC sim at once. Currently, I'm using version 3.0 update one. Open this uh, PLC sim. Okay. So from here, I will select the PLC sim virtual Ethernet adapter. Select this a uh, local area connection, okay. So once we install this uh, PLC sim at once, and we'll build out one connection here. Here, the gray word shows a Siemens PLC sim, and make sure the Ethernet setting here for this connection, the IP address, you must be the same range. You must be the same range. So our PLC that is 192.168.0. something. So in this connection, I select the 99 for this computer. Right? Keep in mind this. All right. And uh, from here, we will set up one instant PLC, and uh, we can set up the name i7 1500 OPC. UE client. Okay, so it's address that is a 192.168.0.100. So basically, what I'm doing that is a uh, we are using PLC SIM on one software to build up one virtual controller. Okay, we will select this uh, unspecified CPU 1500. Select this. Once we hit the start, it will transfer those connections, build up one PLC instance here. Select start. Okay, currently we haven't downloaded yet, so this controller is in stop mode. Okay, and then let's shift back to the Project will. From here, let's download. Download OPC UA client project. Download. The controller that is a uh, 0 0.100. Download this uh, CPU program and configuration to the PLC sim at once. So here, 
Rather than select the actual connection, we will select the PLC SIM virtual Ethernet adapter. If you recall from this PLC SIM, we select here PLC SIM virtual Ethernet adapter. And here we select the, the interface. If we hit this start search, it will search the PLC we set up. So you will see this. If you see the address showing the right, you need to check out the connection. This Siemens PLC SIM virtual connection, the, P, uh, the IP address should be the same range with your virtual PLC here. Keep in mind this. So currently we can download. Okay, load controller. Load. Finish. Okay, currently we download the project. And if we go back here, click this uh, start CPU, you watch this uh, status. Are you sure to want to change the CPU to run mode? Yes. Okay, now our virtual controller is running. Okay, and currently this OPC UA client is running inside this uh, PLC SIM advanced software. And I'm using the virtual machine and uh, I'm using one Ethernet cable connect my laptop to this uh, i7-1200 controller. That i7-1200 controller, that is an OPC UE server there. So one is a physical server running there. One is a one software simulated the controller running as an OPC UE client. All right. If we go to this watch table list and click this online. Firstly, we need to set up the connection. So from here, once I hit this uh, modify on, so currently we turn on this uh, OPC UA connect and uh, this OPC UA connected feedback, it shows a true, that means the connection, we already built up the connection. If we check out this uh, OPC UA status, that is uh, 7000 and this uh, UA diagnostic status, that is uh, 8733. So what does it mean for this? So we can go back to the documents, go back to the website and uh, download this uh, menu. And then we can search. Firstly, let's uh, search 7000. So the 7000 after the BZ done. So this is 7000, that means a client connected and ready for the job because currently we haven't uh, turned on the read and write. So uh, that status shows a 7000, that means correct. What does it mean for this uh, diagnostic status? 8733, so let's search. So this code means the error in the status list after the registration of a method list, because currently I'm not using the method list, but I left the configuration before. Uh, so if we go back to the client interface, and this method, that come from the example before, but current OPC UA server that side, it doesn't have this date time. So that's why it shows an error. Uh, it is fine because in this video, we just want to show or demonstrate the read and write how to do that. You can use this as an example and uh, input the data after. And you can see that, so we can see if I trigger this read, look at this status now. Uh, if I trigger the read, so once I trigger the read, you can see this status goes zero. That means no error. And once I turn it off, it shows a seven. And if I trigger this, right, so it goes zero. If I leave here, it shows a 7,000. So it doesn't mean some error. It just show a current status. If we trigger the read, you will see the data read from the OPC UA server. Every time you trigger, the data will read one time. 
right? In actual case, you can use the one toggle bit to trigger this read command, okay? And we can write something in the OPC UA server side. Let's go there. This is the server side and uh, I'm using the watch table. Okay. Now let's write the data to this uh, test data one and the test data two, uh, 110 and 200, right? And from here, let's shift here, let's trigger read. So we will see the read, so we will see the data read from the OPC UA server. Okay, and now let's write something here. So we transfer prepare the data one, two, three. Uh, th those data are used to write the data from the client to the server. And currently you will see on the server side, this data one, two, three, they are 11, 12, 13. Okay, and from this client side, let's trigger. Trigger this OPC UA write. That's right. Okay. So, and then let's go back to the server side. You will see the client already wrote the data to the server side, 91, 92, 93, right? And now uh, we have a uh, full data read from the server and write uh, 10 data to the OPC UA server. And in case you want to add some data after, so how we can add the data into this uh, interface, right? Currently in this read list, we have a full data and write list, we have this data. In case we need to add something or change the current data here. So what will be? And before we change anything here, I want to show here. And currently if I go offline, open this uh, DB2. And uh, look at this. And as I introduced, so this OPC UA client interface, that is the same name here. So this underscore data, this DB actually follow the configuration from this interface. Now, and now the actual data is showing in the DB looks like this. So in case we need to change the data here, you cannot insert data. You cannot insert the data here. There's no way to allow you to insert data direct from this. You have to do the configuration inside this interface rather than change the data direct from this uh, DB. Because if you look at this, actually this variable list that controlled by this uh, data type here, and this data type controlled by this interface. And how we can change this uh, interface? Um, firstly, we need to go offline. And then let's do online direct, same way. Okay, so in this uh, read list, in this read list, currently we only have a full data here. If I increase the uh, data one to four, just for a demonstration, and drag here. And keep in mind, currently we are doing the offline configuration. We drag here, all right? And then we can disconnect this connection. And once we drag here, and once I hit this uh, save, if I double click this uh, DB2, you will see without this uh, compile, currently this read list is showing here, right? But now if I'm doing the compile, so you will see this variable list is changed, right? It's updated by this uh, interface. So currently, if I go online direct, so you will see 
the DB2 and DB1 got a change because this interface got changed. Through this online and offline compare, so we can see after the reconfiguration, the interface, so the DB1 and the DB2 got a change. It will show the difference. So let's do a download. I'm going to go offline. So I'm going to download. So when I'm going to do the download, it only download the DB. It will not. So the program will not stop the CPU. If we watch this status here. So with this selection, we just need to reinitialize the DB rather than stop the CPU totally. So this is a very perfect feature. So if we hit this uh, reinitialize, we will see the status of CPU. Well, I'm downloading. So actually the CPU will not stop. Right? See? The CPU will not stop. So that means the only things it got changed, that is the DB only. Because the DB updated by this interface. And it also means if you already set up the project and after that you need to add some tags. So you only need to do is online download. So your controller will not stop. So the only update is that DB. You can add the variables inside that interface flexibly. That's all. That's the key function I like to show in this video. And keep in mind, you'd better read the detail inside this uh, documents. It's just 40 pages but actually explain a lot of information to implement this OPC UA client function in the i7-1500 controller. And I highly recommend you start the project and test uh, using this example project. So let's do a quick wrap up. So in this video, I'm using i7-1200 controller as an OPC UA client. And to implement this client, I'm using PLC Sim at once to run the virtual i7-1500 controller run as an OPC UA client. And from the server side, I'm using i7-1200 controller, a physical controller outside the laptop, and use the one cable connect the laptop to the i7-1200 controller, Ethernet connection. And from the project wheel, I'm using TI Portal version 50.1 and version 16. So the reason why I use the two different versions basically show this OPC UA client. So once we implement this function, uh, this client can communicate uh, any other OPC UA server. All right, this is everything I would like to show in this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe. See you in next video.